Hey everybody, it's Mike here, came from Scratch, and welcome to the second part of our double header. Unless, of course, you're watching this video first, because I published them at the same time, in which case, stay tuned for the second part in our double header. What we're looking at today is particle effects generators. It's basically a tale of two particles, completely different ways of accomplishing more or less the same task. And right now, we are looking at particle effects designer. Now, these are both commercial tools, and I will link both of them as I always do. The first one we covered in the other video, or the second one, uh, it gets confusing, was Blast Effects, a $15 uh, package on on HIO and later on this week on Steam. Right now what we are looking at is Particle Effects Designer. A Particle Effects Designer is the same basic thing, but a much different approach and twice as much money. Do you get twice as much functionality? Well, I guess we'll determine that in this video. Now, one thing to be aware of, they don't really sell it that well. I can read you the description of the features here, but they, they do a really poor job of selling themselves. So I'm gonna just skip over their features and we're gonna just jump right into the demonstration. Now, one thing I wanna point out though, if there is a demo available, it is safe limited and is what I'm using in this particular example. Uh, it is 130 megabytes in size. So basically it is 10 times the size of Blast Effects. So hey, at least it's not 10 times the cost. Eh. So right off the hop though, there is something I'm gonna complain about a little bit. Here is the demo as I downloaded it. And there you go. There is the primary user interface and I can't stand when programs do this. So my little feedback to the developer, if you are listening, um, make your resolution scale. So here's what happens when I zoom it up. We've got all kinds of wasted UI space, and this is at 1080p. When I ran this on my 4K display, it was unusable until I manually overrode the DPI settings at the system level. So if you are the author and you have the ability to change things here, you really need to look at resolution independence for your UI and DPI scaling. And so I, I can't stand having dead space in my display. I'm one of those people that zooms in web pages 100%, so I fill up my full browser view. Now, other people may not care, but this, this is definitely my feedback here. So enough of that, let's take a look at the system. You basically got over here is your work of progress. This is where your particles are. Here's a preview of your particle system. And here is the end result once it's rendered. We'll get back to that in a bit. Over here is basically your simple controls for your particle. You could do things like, um, change the uh, shape of your emitter between a circle and a rectangle, change the size of the particle emitter. You can change the shape of the particles themselves, which really isn't gonna make a huge difference as we'll see in a second, but you can do uh, triangles, uh, you can do pixels. Uh, you can also change the blend mode. So additive to normal, this is how other particles interact with each other. Now you notice subtractive, and this is gonna be absolutely pointless. See, it's, they're just subtracting the particles. Well, where that gets useful is when you have multiple particle systems. And let's get onto that topic. See these right here, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, those are your layers, I suppose you could think of it. So I could switch over here to one, like so, and you'll notice I now have a second particle system. And then I can go over here to two, and I have a third particle system, or I could go ahead and get rid of them. So uh, do be aware you can have multiple layers of particle systems on the go, and that's where your blend mode of subtractive would come in useful. If you had a particle for deleting particles from another particle system, for example. <sighs> All right, that's a long sentence. But as you can see, when I click, I get my particles. And if I want, so I could change the lifespan of my particles a bit. Here, let's jack both those values up. So we've got longer lasting particles. And you can see after I let go of the button, they last longer as a result. Let's do that a little bit more because this really shows off this next part. The cool thing is you can actually do motion paths here. So you can do stop, continue, reverse, restart. And what I can do here is click to add points. So I can go say, alt, click, click, oops, alt, right mouse button, sorry, alt, 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 alt. And now when I play, our particle system will follow the path. Now we're running out of life here. So if I wanted to make it get to the end there, I'd have to yes, increase the life a little bit. And there, we got to the end of the path. So you can do some really cool things with paths. Uh, I can go back here to uh, motion again, and I can use alt left mouse button to move the particles around. And if you varied your particles and you had a lot more uh, randomness to them, you could do some really cool things with this. You could create like lightning arcs or neon effects, that kind of stuff. So this pathing stuff is quite cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. And the kind of cool thing is you actually get to see the result in real time. Now I'm gonna jack these back down to smallish values and we will move on. Now, what you would normally do, you're not gonna generally work with particles in this mode. Now, you might work sometimes in raw pixels, but even then, that's pretty rare, unless that's specifically the effect what you're looking for. What you normally do instead would come into visuals here, and this is where you are applying a texture to your texture map instead. So see, we have got basic, color, and complex, and each one of these is changing the resulting images available. So basic, you've got things like 
stars. And here I can create a bunch of stars. Oh my God, it's full of stars. Uh, or I can come down here to complex and do something like smoke and I can pick a smoke effect like this. And that's kind of starting to look a little bit cool. We can also pick the orientation of our sprite. I believe we can bring in ones of our own right here, change the animation speed out right there. But this smoke effect isn't really that convincing for a couple of reasons. First off, we seem to have a whole lot more particles than I want. So let's jack the life down a bit. There, so we got less particles. And now what I want to do is actually come in here to color. And now you're noticing this isn't very smoke-like. Well, we've got birth color, min color, death color. So I'm gonna come here, birth color, white, min color, let's go with the gray, death color, black. And now we look a bit more smoke-like. Now I'm gonna go back to my timeline. And there you see. So when I let go of this, it should fade out. Oh, my bad. I gotta turn burst off right here. So that's why we were getting the constant play. So when I was in play mode, it plays forever. So that was me screwing around with the, the end result. But you see here, boom. So we can get our nice smoke effect fade out after the fact. We should be able to change the animation speed right there. So boom. So those are your different frames. We can do some more density, change things up that way. So you can do some really cool effects very quickly. You also do uh, physics, you can create attractors, you can have gravity in your scene, force in your screen. So if you wanted to have your smoke pulled down, for example, we could do a strong gravity. And it's not gonna show good with a, a burst style. So let's do a play style, see if the gravity shows well. No, yeah, it's not illustrating gravity very well. All right, so I'm gonna get out of there anyways and go on over to the next step here. So we've created our particle and you've shown how we can color it over time. So go back to burst. So there is a simple smoke particle effect. Poof. Now what we can do, so we could have changed out the alpha over time. We could move with a fixed palette. This is actually important. If you're working from an 8-bit or 16-bit style uh, and you want to stay within a set palette set, which is common there, you can actually import your palette and dither your palette out using this setting right here. So we could bring in uh, a palette or use an existing palette style. So if we want to use just Game Boy colors, for example, uh, we can do so. Or we can set that to none. I don't know if I just broke my particle system. Nope, I didn't, I'm good. And then we can go one step further and we can start doing special effects. So for example, here, I wanted this to be black and white. Just come on in here and then choof, now we're in black and white. Now it's kind of ironic because my colors were black and white to start with. So let's go with Cephia instead. So there you see. Now, what you're seeing is it's only gonna show up over here in the pixel render side. So over here is still your raw and then your effects are applied to your pixel render over here. And we can do other things like we could do a blur that actually makes smoke look way worse. Or we do a glow like that. Or chromatic aberration like that. And let's turn Cephia off like that. So you can do special effects that will ultimately come out over here in the pixel render as you use them. And then this one tells it to clear the screen or not each frame. And generally you're gonna wanna clear the screen because your, your systems update, otherwise it's gonna turn into a giant blob really fast. But I imagine there's a couple effects you might wanna pull off where you don't clear the screen each animation frame. And then custom, you can, you can change your canvas width, your size, uh, render, front. But mostly what you would do at this point then is go into render. And you can do manual rendering. You can say how many frames to render, how many pre-frames, so basically how many frames to run before, like to run your particle system before you start recording your particle system. So if you had a bit of a spit at the beginning to start your particle system up, uh, pre-frames can help you cook up your particle system so that it's at the point where you want it to be before you start it rendering. Uh, you can set it to loop if you so wished. Uh, that changed, oh, so it changed, that was weird. So I'll go back, so we'll do 30 frames per second, and then when you're ready, just go ahead and click start, and you can do a render, and then what you'll see is your render will show up down here. And then ultimately you can export this guy out as PNG, a GIF, or as a JSON file, JSON being JavaScript object orientation, which is a JavaScript way of marking up. So if you're gonna use this in code, uh, where it was specifically supported, you can export it as the JSON format. Now you're gonna find that, again, is the limitation of the demo. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, I, I've really kind of brushing the surface on this one. I find that there's a lot more capability here, but I also find um, this interface isn't as immediate or logical as I would like. Now, a lot of this functionality I'm not getting into, like your, your timeline stuff I haven't really touched on. But again, some of that is just because it, it's more confusing to deal with as well. So you can keyframe things over time, um, like down across the timeline right here. 
but I, I'm not going to touch on it because, again, the interface is a little unintuitive to me, I suppose, is what I would say. But between these two, you could create just about any kind of particle effect system you want, uh, just much, much different approaches to how they get there. So, yeah, that is ju 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 ju, Pixel FX Designer. And again, if this didn't do it for you, check out the other one, and I will have them both linked down below. Um, again, I wanted to try and keep the videos about the same size, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot more detail. Actually, I'm not going into any more detail. I'm done. So uh, let me know if you once you've watched both videos, which one appeals to you more? Did neither of them appeal to you? If so, why? If so, not? Why not? Again, just let me know. All right. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.